and increased brown adipose tissue energy expenditure, which also raises uh, basal body temperature quite a bit. And it can increase it by 7 to 15%, depending which on the dose. Huge. Okay, last topic today, Mirabicron. Uh, people have been asking me, I already recorded the deep dive, so that will be up before this podcast goes live. Um, Dean was very excited to run it. Kurt, did you ever look into Mirabicron and beta three adrenergic receptor stimulation, or what, what's your what's your thought on this? Not with I... not with that drug specifically, mm. but beta three stuff, sure. Yeah, and and Dean, of course, you were one of the first to talk about it, but you never got your hands on it. Uh, don't worry, I ran the experiment for you. Yeah, we we seem to all be the the willing guinea pigs when it comes to each other's ideas or figuring out yeah. <laughs> how to how, how to I guess. Progress uh, enhanced bodybuilding, which is obviously what people are here to listen to. Yeah, well, but this is—I mean, this is why I wanted to get us to be together because we all have unique ideas, and and you guys make me want to experiment to, to figure out a higher truth. Um, I, the court says something I'm like hmm, interesting. I do the research, and I'm like, yeah, okay, makes sense. And then I'm <laughs> gonna fucking run it. I, I mean, <laughs> see what my, happens. My, uh, I guess, delve into it was I had a debate years ago over the fat loss properties of clan and, you know, using mm -hmm. ketotypin to prolong the fat loss. And I was like, well, not really, because when you look at what causes fat loss lipolysis, it's beta three. The beta mm -hmm. two, yeah, creates a adrenergic response where you shake. And obviously as you shake, you increase thermogenesis and neat and calorie expenditure. But just because that sort of beta 2 adrenergic response dampens then where you stop the shaking and everything else after you know a couple of weeks doesn't mean that clenbuterol isn't a fat burning agent for lipolysis you're just not getting the added benefit of the extra shaking and neat that is burning calories you mm -hmm. know five percent of your bmo in the background so that was sort of where i was like well ketotypin yeah will prolong that beta 2 so you have the shakes and you have the whatever the, the elevated heart rate and that plays mm -hmm. into the bigger picture, but if you're talking about fat burn and it's consistently fat burning or causing lipolysis through beta three, yeah, and beta three doesn't downregulate in non-obese nope. subjects. Nope, that, no, that's what doesn't we doesn't regulate. We, we we looked into that then we incurred on a podcast last year, and at that beta three just seems like this magic thing that has gone sort of swept under the radar from a fat loss perspective and enhanced bodybuilding. And, and the only thing that I could find, and this was like what. 2017 was Mira Bikron, but you just for the life could not get it anywhere. So it sort of sat in the defense there on the table of, you know, if someone can get hold of it, knock yourselves out to tell me how it looks. And then we, we start to see obviously the rat data of how effective it is as a, a browning agent is the other yep. thing that, you know, the browning of your white fat as well is another great positive of Mira Bikron. Yeah, so it does. It does uh, increase brown adipose tissue within white uh, adipose tissue only in the subcutaneous space. It's called beijing, and increase brown adipose tissue um, energy expenditure, um, which also raises uh, basal body temperature quite a bit. And it it it, it can increase it by seven to oh, was was it fifteen percent depending which on the huge. dose, which is used. Yeah, so. At the 150 milligram dose, which I found to be the most effective one, because at 200 milligrams, there is some beta-1 adrenergic receptor spillover. Um, and that might also be caused by beta-3 adrenergic receptor downregulation, but that it, it simply hasn't been studied. Um, so in the in the medical insert of Mirabicron, they said at 200 milligrams daily, it spills over to the beta-1, increasing heart rate. So I included that in my deep dive. But So 50 milligrams, multiple servings per day, even though the half-life is 50 hours, that seems to mitigate most of the side effects that are found in the human studies, because there's a good amount of human studies in healthy individuals regarding Mirabicron at higher dosages, regarding the increasing energy expenditure, blood pressure, resting heart rate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of doing 150 milligrams or 200 milligrams in one serving, you can mitigate the side effects with multiple servings per day, so you don't get this peak. Uh, the peak occurs at about 180 minutes after the, the serving. Um, so taking it an hour pre-workout, okay, you get some effect, but most of the uh, thermogenesis and, and, and fatty acid oxidation occurs well after the, the dosing. Um, but dosing it three times per day seems to be the most effective. And then combining it with a low-dose clenbuterol or solbutamol really takes the fat loss to the next level because 
clenbuterol spills over into the beta-3 from about 80 micrograms onwards. And solbutamol spills over into the beta-1 from about 8 milligrams per day onwards when you take it orally. So this is why a lot of guys, they say, ah, oh, clenbuterol really works at 120 micrograms daily because it's 80 micrograms working on the beta-2 and 40 micrograms is working on the beta-3. Clenbuterol yeah, is already yeah. anabolic from 40 micrograms onwards. So I combined 40 micrograms clenbuterol with 150 milligrams yeah. Mirabicron. Okay, heart rate increases to the point it's uncomfortable. So I ran it for a couple of days, but fat loss, holy shit, man. Holy shit, it's next level. Um, eight or six milligrams salbutamol with um, 150 milligrams Mirabicron. Just as, just as well of a fat loss but less of the shakes and less of the, the heart rate increase. And I believe from four milligrams onwards, uh, solbutamol has anabolic properties. So if you run solbutamol between four to six milligrams and, and Mirabicron 100 to 150 milligrams, which I discussed in a deep dive, you get the beta-2 and beta-3 adrenergic response. So you get some anabolism and fat loss through beta-2 and fat loss through beta-3 with minimal increase in heart rate. So we, we might have found a new champion. Um, like over clenbuterol solo. Your uh, sleep quality improves because you're not waking up every two hours to piss in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's a, in the first minute I mentioned that because instead of four P's, you have two. Now, the problem is, is that every P is twice as long because it's the same volume of urine. So you sit there like, you sit there like, when is this going to be done? It's, like, it's, it's literally like uh, Austin Powers. First movie. Yeah. It's literally like that. You just sit there. Evacuation complete? No, no, still going. So, so that's that's the downside. Um, and after this experiment with salbutamol and mirabicron and clenbuterol, mirabicron and, and running clen and salbutamol solo to kind of compare, um, I'm off of it because <laughs> it's too much better adrenergic receptor stimulation for me for the last couple of weeks. Um, the only real downside of mirabicron is that some people notice water retention, but I did not notice that. Um, beyond the growth hormone and the revulsing that I'm taking and the uh, creatine. So I, I probably take the growth hormone out uh, this weekend and then the revulsing out and the, the creatine out, throw the mirror big run in, one more micro fat loss and then see what happens regarding water retention. But I, uh, after these experiments, I'm pretty fucking diced. I bet. Uh, 